Okay, so a few of you wanted a video on how I did this. So I am using um, magnetic channel locks, which means that with this button, I can lock my machine to either go uh, horizontally or, sorry, slate, horizontally or vertically. Now, because a lot of the bulk was in the middle of um, this particular piece, I used these towels um, to make sure that the alignment was completely straight. So there's actually, um, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, you see that laser light? So that laser light um, shows where the needle is. So because my machine likes to sew straight lines from left to right, what I do is I sew left to right and then on the way back, I check to make sure that the alignment is on. If it's off, then I stick these towels at exactly the precise place where the line will meet up because then that will make up or it will balance out the bulk that's here over here so the lines are completely straight. Um, Using the magnetic locks I found was helpful for two reasons. Number one, it made sure that my lines didn't get squiggly. And number two, because with foundation paper piecing, you have more bulk than normal. When you hit tricky parts, you know, if I was doing just manually, I could, you know, really lose my place. But when you're locked in, it helps you kind of overcome that bump. Um, like, you know, for example, here, you know, this is a this is a seam where if I was doing it manually, I could have lost my place. But channel locks help to, to keep your place. So basically what I did was, um, I'm going to try to do this with one hand, is I would put a ruler right on top of the line. And then once it's there, I bump up my, um, let's see if I can do it with one hand, my machine up to that line okay, so that I I know that by bumping it up I'm actually going to be sewing a quarter of an inch from that line to where the needle is right because this is a quarter inch foot on on all the way all the ways around so when it's in the right placement and I have bumped it up, which is good. Then I come over here and I lock it into a horizontal position. And once it's in a horizontal position, I can, I push play over here. I kind of audition it to see if it's the stitch length that I like. And it is, um, so I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. So then I am simply moving the long line over and I finish and I go all the way down. And you can see that the lines um, look pretty uniform. I mean, they aren't exactly perfect. <laughs> there is some variance, but it's enough to give a feel of uniformity. And what I really like is that up close, obviously, you can really you can really see the lines, but when you pull away, they all blend together. So that's how I did it. And, um, you know, long arm quilting is, is probably my weakest. I probably said this quite a bit, but it's my, the weakest skill I've, I haven't developed it as much. So, um, in the very beginning of the quilt, I did have some tension problems, which I think what I'll do is as I, um, unfold this. I'll check to see if there are any problem er, problematic areas, unpick those and redo them. Um, but yeah, this was it guys. And I really, I really um, think that straight line sewing on these kinds of pieces is the way to go. Then again, it matches my skill set. Some of you may be really good at more detailed piecing, but there's so much detail in a piece like this that I felt like if I really highlighted the shapes, it, it would be a little too much. Okay, so hopefully this is helpful to folks. Oh, I used um, 50 weight poly thread by Superior Threads called So Fine. And my stitch length was a 12. And I used the same thread on the top and on the bottom. My machine's is a handy quilt 
Candy Quilter Amara, and this is actually just a 10 foot frame. So it's not that big. All right, folks.